is the Dhar Dharmendra Pradam. Uh, I think all of you who have followed world affairs in the last uh, uh, couple of years uh, have seen uh, very interesting trends. For the last two decades, you've seen incredible growth uh, from China, uh, and it has dominated sort of the world economic picture. And there are a lot of people who feel that what happened in China is going to happen in India in the next two decades, uh, and the importance of India. Uh, it will be the most populous country in the world. It will be a major economic powerhouse. Uh, and a lot of that economic growth is going to have to be fueled with energy. And therefore, energy in India is becoming uh, one of the key issues that one confronts when one looks at the global energy picture. Uh, and so uh, it's with real pleasure today uh, that we have the, the, the minister here, uh, he is the man in charge of India's hydrocarbon sector. He's a member of the upper house of the Indian parliament. And under his direction and guidance, India has made great strides in things like diesel deregulation. He's eased regulation, uh, uh, regulations for investments and stimulate investment in the natural gas grid, distribution grid, which is becoming increasingly important as the role of natural gas grows in every continent on this planet. Uh, so it gives me great pleasure to introduce the Honorable Minister uh, Dharmendra Prada. Good evening, friends. I will say it. I wish to thank uh, Professor Henry B for his warm words of welcome and the generous introduction. Friends, I am honored to be speaking at this prestigious uh, Harvard Kennedy Center. Studying in Harvard is an aspiration for the best students of the world, including from India. This university has contributed greatly to the world of innovation, beginners and learning. Several renowned Indians have been associated with this institution. Friends, today morning, I delivered the keynote address at the MIT Energy Conference on an interesting topic. It was a changing uh, paradigm in the changing energy paradigm in the world. This is my second meeting to this city, which has a historical connection with India. Boston was in the forefront of the struggle against East India Company. So was India. At the same point of time and eventually both were victorious. In our spiritual history too, the great Hindu saga of Swami Vivekananda spoke at the election village church near Boston in 1893. Numerous Indians will visit the church to walk in the steps of Swami Vivekananda. Friends, India has undertaken a series of serious reforms in the last two and a half years under the leadership of Prime Minister Narendra Modi. In my speech, I will focus on the path-breaking policy initiative we have taken in the field of oil and gas. I welcome your comments and questions following my presentation. Friends, uh, today we have uh, mutually agreed to put some series of energy for all strategy in India. From corporate to welfare ministry, this is the motto of our uh, ministry. Friends, uh, India has population more than in US and Europe combined. It is home to 18% of world population. However, in energy term, only contributes 5% to global energy consumption. Millions in India still take uh, lack of accessibility to electricity. India has less than 20 vehicles per 100 inhabitants as compared to 800 per thousand in United States. Even within India, the Western states have higher access to petroleum products. Most Eastern states are energy star. If we segregate in, 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 into India as a Western and Eastern part, Western part is a little bit more uh, energy consumed state in comparison to Eastern part. Even for cooking fuels, rural penetration in 2015 in most rural states were less than 15%. 
the LPD penetration was primarily an urban centric. Our Prime Minister has said the following vision of India's energy future. He has four pillars of our achievements. Energy access, energy efficiency, energy sustainability, and energy security. Friends, let me ponder some point on energy access. When we took uh, charge, almost we Around 60% we can say did not have access to clean cooking fuels and depend on firewood for cooking purpose. We realize that smoke from Indian cooking fire is very dangerous. There is a statistics by World Health Organization. Every year in India more than 5 lakhs women are dying due to domestic pollution. Collection of firewoods, spending times in kitchen, for slow cooking and affecting women's health was an all affecting economic activities. Women could have alternatively participated in economic activities if they were free from the collecting firewoods, cooking in the conventional stoves. Hence, the government initiated ambitious program in name of Pradhan Mantri Ujjwala Yojana. We are providing Free LPG connection to women, to prime, especially the poor women in the rural households. Our government has budgeted 80 billion of this for this program. This is also expected to generate employment to 100,000 people. Till now, we have a very successful progress story. Today, India is second in terms of LPG consumption in the world, and we are primarily using it as a cooking fuel. In 2017, 2017 financial year, we are target to provide 15 million LPG connections under the Ujjwala Yojana. I am happy to announce that we have achieved this uh, target in the beginning of the eighth. We will begin eight months. This is not only in LPG, while LPG is being the provided to rural areas, we are targeting pipe gas to urban areas. We have achieved growth rate of 11% over the last 2.2 and a half year, and we target to increase this to 10 million by 2019. This to pro create a gas uh, Network in the country, we have to invest, we have to focus on gas deal to ensure ga that gas is available to all throughout India and every industry can access to gas. We are doubling our pipeline length from 15,000 kilometers to 30,000 kilometers. Which we have now in India, the primary gas grid is uh, centering around western part of the country. All the LNG terminals uh, are situated in the ocean part of the country reduce, to reduce the disparity for the accessibility of gas. Eastern part, part of India did not have a gas pipeline, and so low demand is there. To reduce this regional disparity, <coughs> our government has decided to invest in Eastern pipeline, which will boost gas sales in this region. Which not only that, northeastern part of India is full of gas and oil. Northeast India, which has several exploration basin, is also focus area of our government. We are planning for the higher refining capacity and promoting trade between northeastern region and neighboring south countries to provide both. Fuel oil, cooking fuel to 
some of the South country, Nepal, Bhutan, Bangladesh. Now we are planning to supply hydrocarbon to uh, Myanmar also. Since we are uh, in India, we are uh, concentrating on the efficiency aspect also, utilizing uh, cutting edge technology, utilizing uh, new method. Since India has embarked upon this journey to provide all its citizens with a bank account. When Prime Minister Modi took charge, he announced there will be scheme Prime Minister Jandan Yojana. Now, 265 million citizens have been opened bank accounts to the zero balance. Simultaneously, as biometrics are getting cheaper to record and authenticate, India has alerted the unique 12 digit number to every individual. Now, 99% of the population in India has a unique identity number. It's known as Aadhaar. And uh, I will happily inform this gathering. India is one largest mobile success story with more than 1.1 billion mobile subscribers. Friends, this uh, bank account. May I have your attention, please? May I have your attention, please? This is an emergency of the HK on campus requiring the evacuation of all buildings. Please gather your belongings and leave the apartment building and report to your Sorry. <laughs> a new weapon to create a targeted subsidy movement in India. To explain further, let me uh, put one of our great initiatives. Yes. The great initiative which has been uh, recognized by some of the agencies was largest uh, DBT program. In the Ministry of Petroleum, what was the practice uh, before we took charge? As I said, the LPG is a popular uh, domestic cooking fuel in our country. Our consumer base is huge. Now, when we took charge, around uh, 150 million LPG consumers were there. Our practice was to give the LPG in a subsidized day. We thought at one point, one point of time, <coughs> subsidy is inevitable in our society, but subsidy should be targeted those who need it. Everybody, I, in previous time, the president of India is entitled for subsidy. Prime Minister of India was entitled for subsidy. Provincial chief minister were entitled for subsidy. Some of my young uh, administrative friends are here. They are also. They were of 10 percent subsidy. At one point of time, government think that subsidy should be made for only for poor, for the down children. So how do we do that? We have created a gateway which is known as uh, Pahar. It's a uh, local name. Pratyaksha uh, Hastantan of Lab. It's a DBT. It's a Hindi name of DBT. Linking through mobile number, other UID number and bank account. The consumer will now purchase the subsidy, purchase the commodity with the market rate. The subsidy amount will be directly sent to its bank account. Direct the benefit will be transferred to its bank account. Now this program is world's largest uh, DBT program and uh, we have uh, this is a vaccine program by government of India. Friends, not only in LPG, with success of uh, DBT in LPG, we are planning, we are also planning to use same methodology in Kiroshin, another uh, cooking fuel for the rural area of India, the poor area of India. Friends, another way of uh, targeting subsidy, at one point of time, my Prime Minister appealed to the countrymen, those who can afford their cooking fuel from their own pocket, they should not avail subsidy. In India, what is the expectation of citizens from a government? Government should take care of everything. Here in our appeal, Prime Minister appealed to the citizens, 
you should give it a further society. However, my prime minister has given faith on people and people have started giving, giving, giving it up. And now more than 10.5 million households have given up their LPG subsidy voluntarily. This will help the government to provide subsidy to the most needy person. Let's talk uh, something about uh, sustainability. We understand that energy growth has to be sustainable without harming the environment. To reduce vehicular pollution from April 27, 17, BS4, which is equivalent to BS Euro 4, will be rolled out in all over India. We will also be skipping BS5, which is equivalent to Euro 5, and directly we will move towards Euro 6 by 2020. Our refineries are investing to ensure that we are, we are able to meet this uh, emission target. CNG is widely used in the India for cars and buses. We have recently launched the CNG based two wheelers also. We also tested LNG bus and pilot buses and are planning to increase its use in the interstate transportation. LNG is being explored in heavy vehicles and railways. In coming days, to upgrade, to create a new gas market, CNG, PNG and LNG directly as a transportation fuel, these are our priorities. This is not only creating a market, we have to look into the price aspect we thought. We have also targeted the cheaper gas for selected sectors. We have renegotiated the LNG price with production to ensure that benefits of the cheaper LNG price is passed on to the Indian consumers. We have deregulated diesel and petrol prices. Gas pooling has been introduced for fertilizer and power sectors. Friends, we have uh, in Indian scenario, we have concentrated on biofuels also. We are also increasing domestic availability of fuels by blending fossil fuel with biofuels. We are investing in second generation technology to convert our surplus biomass into ethanol that can be blended with petrol. Friends, this can create a new business model for rural India. All the agricultural waste and all the urban waste can be converted to the energy. Friends, uh, India is a net uh, importer. 80% of our requirement we are importing from different sources, whether it is crude oil or gas. We want to augment our own production. India has 26 uh, by geological sediments. Some of the oil, uh, oil majors, domestic oil majors and some of the IOCs are also working in the Indian market. We have, uh, at one point of time, we have nominated region. Later on, since the last 20 years, we moved towards a building ground. To more simplify more, we have uh, to upgrade our domestic availability. We have moved towards a more transparent mechanism for awarding the blocks, which is uh, the new hydrocarbon exploration license policy. Just recently, we have a, when the world is facing a low oil price, EMP activities uh, is at uh, the lowest uh, import. But within this scenario, <coughs> looking into our market size, looking into our market vibrancy, we have uh, find out some way. We have uh, put some discovered field for the bidding. And successfully, we have completed that bidding round. More than 30 new players are there in this bidding round. Friends, uh, India has ambition to create its energy security. To improve our energy security, India being a large importer of oil, we have invested in strategic oil reserves. 
We plan to increase the current capacity of 5.3 million metric ton to 50 million metric ton. We have planned to add on another 10 million metric ton capacity for our strategic nation. Friends, uh, we know hydrocarbon is, a, is not a local commodity. Hydrocarbon is a world commodity. We we'll have to have our energy security. We know we are heavily depending on technology. We are heavily depending on innovations. We are augmenting our domestic uh, production. We are heavily moving towards a bioenergy vertical. But still, we know the nature of uh, area, the nature of energy security we have to have. We have our bilateral relationship with the different part of the world. Promoting dialogue with major partners in the world. Acquire hydrocarbon assets, the Agos. Pipeline of uh, transportation gas to the trans country pipelines we are planning. And we are talking to the different uh, international organizations. Friends, that uh, is our commitment for sustainable energy, accessible energy, energy security. <coughs> Friends, in conclusion, I would like to say that India is already preparing to link itself to the global hydrocarbon landscape. Our approach has been holistic and uh, covers both conventional as well as alternative source of energy with a view to promote Prime Minister's vision, energy justice to all, linked with climate justice. Friends, in the rapidly changing world, Harvard is contributing in preparing the world to meet the future challenges. My ministry will be happy to collaborate with the Harvard in the energy sphere. I thank you again to invite me to speak to you all. I wish all of you great success in your lifetime. Thank you, friends. Thank you very much. Uh, before we open it up for uh, questions and answers, I, I do want to thank um, the India Caucus and the Energy, uh, uh, the Harvard Kennedy School Energy Pick for all the work they did to make this possible. Uh, now, what I'd like to do, if that's all, um, is to open this up, but before that, I'd like to give uh, Professor O'Sullivan a chance to ask a question. Um, and remember, for your questions, they should be short, and they should end with a question mark. Um, <laughs> Professor O'Sullivan? Thank you very much, Mr. Minister. We're really very pleased to have you here today. I want to ask, uh, build on what you talked about, kind of international cooperation. And I recall that there was a period where India was looking at China's model, its going out model, as a way of potentially um, emulating that model as a, a vehicle or a policy for Indian investments in other countries related to energy. Is that something that you still think of as a possible model for India, or have you learned lessons that have made you move in a different direction? So, so let me uh, answer in this way. We, we want to develop our own model. We don't want to copy from anybody. Can you should not also be. It's, it's, it's impossible to uh, copycat anybody's model. Every country has its own requirement, every country has its own uh, financial capacity, every country has its own uh, uh, domestic compulsion. India wants to be energy security group. We know we have a, uh, we have to depend on world market for our energy source. As I said, the different country has different strategy. Through our bilateral relationship, through our good relationship, through our goodwill, and that apart, if I can cite one example, what is the energy market in near future? Whole Europe is at stagnancy. Japan and Korea are not taking what they should take uh, in the energy market. There are only really two areas. Asia is the market. Along Asia, China and India, these are the true points. And China has already Achieve its peak. And in the next 30 years, if I can say 2050, India is a destination of energy market. So no investor, no oil producing company, 
no oil producing country would not like to have a good bilateral relationship with India. India is uh, focusing on that. And through all this kind of market nature, and uh, today India is the number three energy consumer in the world, and still we have a low per capita energy consumption. So this is the reality for the world that, that is the main reason India is the favorite destination of FDI. And in energy area, lot of new things are coming up in the solar energy area, in the renewable energy area, in the bioenergy area, in the gas infrastructure. So I am hopeful India wants to develop its own model and world investors are in their own faith in Indian model. Open it up. Yeah. Uh, please state your name, too. Yeah. Yeah, my name is Alejandro. Uh, I'm a student here. I'm an MBA student. So, building the question of Professor O'Sullivan, I just wonder what's your take uh, on the Indian Third Summit, uh, Africa, Indian Third Summit that was held in 2015. I mean, what's the path forward in terms of energy? for India in Africa, like investment in Nigeria, Equatorial Guinea, uh, and South Sudan, or Sudan. And for that matter, how we can overlap with the strategy of India to get a permanent seat in the UN Security Council and the human rights concern that's happened in some countries in Africa. Thank you. Africa is a uh, great partner, whole Africa is a great partner to India's uh, energy aspiration. Uh, last year, we have organized India-African uh, Africa Forum Summit. Uh, they are almost all the head of the state of Africa were there in India. And uh, I was fortunate to party to so many bilateral discussions with our Prime Minister. And we are confident uh, both Africa and India are uh, of the same aspiration. If you can, India is the market, India has the technology, Africa has the resource. If we can synergize both the economy, both the strategy, we can complement each other. And uh, I'm hopeful and very confident uh, in hydrocarbon area also. There is special cooperation between India and Africa. One of my friend is here with me, who has a huge investment. His government uh, is a CEO of some government, uh, one of our government company, OVL. He has investment, I think, more than six country in Africa. And uh, one of the uh, we have. Uh, around 6 billion investment in Mozambique, in the new Rohova gas peak. We have investment in Sudan, we have, I rightly have said, we have investment in South Sudan. We are taking 8% uh, of our crude oil from Nigeria. Somebody, uh, I met uh, one uh, young boy in today's uh, morning meeting. Two days back, I have been to one of our LNG terminal in West Coast. I saw, one LNG carrier from Nigeria. So, for India, Africa is a, just uh, after uh, Middle East, Africa is the area of our cooperation. Due to our historical linkages, uh, both the continent, both the area has our, uh, I don't see any difficulties uh, to have a business with African countries. My name is Abhishek. I am from Northeastern University. Um, my question is that, like, like in US, government is spending too much money on electrical subsidy, like electrical vehicles. Does Indian government have plans to spend money on electrical electrification of vehicles and things like that? You will appreciate uh, in our railway budget, electric vehicle doesn't mean only four wheeler. Electric uh, transportation mechanism primarily in India we are focusing on railways. But every focusing on railway electrification. Also, we are concentrating on four wheelers. There is a working group uh, by multi ministry. They are working on in, in India. Today, the basic challenge is the battery. Basic challenge is the storage. How to carry that? And uh, I'm hopeful the scientific, world scientific innovation. We can capture it in the market and we are concentrating the electric vehicle. 
we are not, uh, we don't even land dive on that. We are not working on that. Hi, uh, my name is Nijo. I'm a student here uh, in Kennedy School. Uh, thank you for taking the time to talk to us. I really appreciate it. Uh, I had a question about JAM that you mentioned. Um, so yesterday, the HRD ministry made Aadhaar mandatory for uh, school children to get the midday meal. Uh, and your own ministry has made Aadhaar mandatory for better. Um, obviously, I mean, these notifications don't agree with the Supreme Court order on not making Aadhaar mandatory for public subsidy programs. but. Also thinking beyond that, I think it also puts the burden on the citizen to prove their identity to the government. So my question is, what do you think your ministry or the government in large, what role do they have in reducing that burden and making it easier for people to use Aadhaar to access government services? I think there is no burden. After all, there is no burden. Because 99% the population is already there is identity in Aadhaar. I can take a supplement to that. There's no border. Number of number two. Let's let's find out the benefit out of that. Let me give one example. Yes, when we have implemented the program when there was a restriction from Supreme Court. Today Allah is Allah is enabled with law, proper law. Two years back, it was not properly designed as a law. It was in a grey area. With that grey area also, grey period also. Without sinner, without uh, seeding the Allah, only seeding the, the now we are seeding the Allah identity also in our MP three twenty one list. Synergizing bank account and our uh, MP three twenty one number, we could save uh, ghost account of we could find out card of four, uh, we can save forty million. Take Allah consumer. If this take Allah. Uh, LPG consumer will have been consumed in two years more than three billion, more than three billion spending would have been there. State exchequer would have been bothered with that amount of money. Some of my young uh, administrative officials are here. They were presiding over the rural area, in the tribal area, in scholarship distribution, in public distribution of food grains, in why, what is the necessity of putting Aadhaar identity number in the school children? Because midday meal is linked to the school children. Lot of ghost students were there. In their name, a caucus was taking all the benefit. How do you target in a country like India? How do you target the beneficiary in a scientific manner? You must have identity. Don't you think America has identity number to all its uh, citizen here? What is the issue in America? What are you debating here? The whole issue of identity we are debating here. So India, we don't have that, we don't have to that extremity in my country. We have to focus it for poor. How do we help the poor? If you know who is that, who is the gentleman? How do you know that? If he has identity. I don't think law has not restricted anything to us. And we are utilizing using that law for the goodness of the good good self of the society. And successfully we have uh, piloted this scheme. Two days back, railway ministry has uh, put this condition. Because you know you are in India, lot of no 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 time will find a railway ticket, proper railway ticket uh, if you book uh, 15 days before. Because lot of ghost booking were there. Now you must have other identity number, <coughs> you can't uh, duplicate. So this identity is necessary to curb the corruption, to check the corruption, to not to siphon the government uh, subsidy <coughs> to the unscrupulous people. Hello, sir. Uh, my name is Javier. I'm a student at the Kennedy School here. Uh, Thank you for the great presentation. I had a question about the deregulation of prices uh, in terms of uh, market prices, which I think you have implemented in your government. And uh, that, that's possible now at the $40 to $50 oil prices, diesel prices are reasonable and people are used to it. 
but do you have some contingency plans if oil goes to 70 or even 75? Do you think consumers, especially like the trucking lobby and the, all these very powerful lobbies, do you think you can pass on price increases directly to consumers without oil companies issuing bonds and all the other mechanisms? Well, we have to put the market when price was at 70 dollars. When 40 dollar price is not a permanent phenomenon, <coughs> now price is up to 55. My economy is capable to handle that up to 60-65. So it's not an issue, this were not linked. But main issue is whether you have to provide energy to all the citizens or not. If that is the strategy, you have to have the investment, this is desired investment in your market. How do you do that? How do you create a confidence among the investor? If you do not link your product to the market, there will not be there will not be a violation in the market and among the investors. So looking into the long-term strategy, we have consciously deliberated our uh, product. We are not uh, concerned how things will come up. We'll see. There's no 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 uh, knee-jerk reaction we have to have. Can I get a sense of who else has questions? My name is Akansha. My question is regarding the profit sharing and revenue sharing paradox solution that we have. Could you please explain why India started as profit sharing paradox and now it is uh, moving to revenue sharing? What is the downfall in that and how are you predicting that? <coughs> we have to go to the background of the Indian uh, hydrocarbon industry. Till 19, all the hydrocarbon resources were given in a nomination basis to two oil producing company of the country. One is ONG, other is Oil India. Background government think uh, these two companies have their built high. More production is ne ne necessary. So we have to unbundle, we have to uh, open up our industry. So in the mid Early 90s, we have opened up our uh, uh, EMP industry to the market. Uh, from the day one, it was a 100% uh, FDI enabled uh, policies are there. In those days, we have uh, you adopted this uh, profit sharing mechanism. India has experience of 25 years in profit sharing mechanism method. That's a method we have rightly, that's a one method in so many parts that uh, this is the uh, this is the model, but later in Indian sector we found one thing: lot of disputes are there, lot of controversies are there. In the profit sharing mechanism, what is the uh, what is the more primary model? In a layman uh, uh, understanding, I can say the promoter, the producer <coughs> will share the profit after all its expense he will make. What are the expense? Royalty, taxes. These are the common. The facility, the exploration activities, the production facility you will put there, all other expense you will, you will first uh, take care of all this expense. Uh, uh, this is known as cost recovery. After cost recovery, the after uh, reduction of royalty, after reduction of uh, taxes, the left amount, leftover amount you will share with the government. Here lies the controversy. How much cost recovery you have done? Who has monitored that cost recovery? There are different models, different parameters in different part of all. But in India, in a democracy, we have some scooting agencies. We have some auditing agency, we have a Supreme Court, there is a parliament. There is objection. What is the guarantee? The X amount you have taken for cost recovery, it is genuine or not? So we have experience, looking into that experience, looking into that, uh, this famous is uh, in India, it's a term utilized by my German friend, gold plating. So our this gold plating, we have uh, created a new model. This is a revolutionary model. Government will not interfere in your day-to-day -day activities. You will take care of your investment. You will do your assessment, how much hydrocarbon is available in this XP, how much, how efficiently you will monetize that, how less investment you will do to monetize that, it's your issue. How much revenue you will share with government, that is government's concern. And recently in our discovered small field, successfully, uh, rightly uh, uh, the way you have put, there was apprehension. 
whether when oil is uh, going through a profit sharing model, why you are going for a revenue sharing model? Whether it will work or not. Trends very proudly, I can say, even last uh, week only, we have concluded our deal. We are very successfully, we have completed the small discover fields in the middle ground through the revenue sharing model, and there is a new enthusiasm in the market. Yeah, uh, my name is Mandra. I'm from Bali, France. I have a question about the lean cooking. So, what are the other strategies we do have to tackle this problem, or do you think this LPG model is uh, going to cover the entire country if we are if we're still importing the gas? No, no, I, we don't have to import. Uh, uh, we're importing LPG. We're producing LPG from our refinery also. As in India, there. Are and uh, what I can say in crore, if I convert uh, how many millions also? 10, 10, 10, million. Million. Huh? 10 million. 10 million. 10 million. No, no, no. no. 100 crore household. Mm -hmm. 1 billion. 25 1 crore household. James? 250 million. There in India, there are 250 million households. <coughs> now we have 72% LPG connections are in those households. There is high we have a target of 10 million through pipe natural gas. Urban India will be linked with pipe natural gas. Rural India and middle class and lower middle class and one of the poorest of group will be linked with LPG. Some section will be linked with uh, supply with electric energy. And some portion will be remain with uh, conventional cooking fuel that we have to plan. But uh, the kind of basic concern you have uh, through importing, how can you manage your LPG requirement? Yeah, exactly. that, that's your concern. But then, need not worry. The kind of uh, sales gas you are producing in this country, the lot of availability of LPG will be there in the Middle East. And the whole uh, Australia is going to uh, full of uh, uh, natural gas in very recently. So yeah. there, there, is, there is no dearth of uh, LPG in the world market. That, that calculation we have. But we have some kind of initiative or grid solution or something community cooking that could provide or help the poor people who are still do not have access to the LPG system? Do we have some kind of initiative? <laughs> some things are very imaginative and very good in academic sphere. <laughs> Questions? Actually, there is a very elaborate scheme of the government for biogas generation, and that is actually something related to what you are thinking. Oh, you know, Varma, what they are doing in MIT in Harvard, you might have some new technology for cooking. One of my friends from the Bangladesh, Mr. Uh, Elijah, my new prime minister, this is a very senior person, Mr. Uh, Tofi Pillai Chundri. He is a very strong believer and he told me always, why you are wasting your time on LPG? Time will come. So solar energy, to so solar energy, if uh, solar energy can create uh, electric energy, why, why can't they create some cooking energy? So some MIT innovation may come to our rescue. Who knows after five years which kind of domestic cooking will be made need? Thank you, Professor. I'm a real I'm a real team fellow in, uh, in this school. Uh, just to mention, India is the third number three uh, consumer energy country. So, how India make more play more important role in global energy use uh, governance? That's a simple strategy. Because, yes, I am a strong believer India and some of Asian countries. Jointly, they can, now the uh, 21st century is the era of Asia. How do I play my role in industrial energy market? If I the gone are the days of producers market. Now the era of consumer markets is emerging. If the consumer will decide from whom I will take energy, at one point of time, energy was only available in some part of the world. Now energy is available, primarily hydrocarbon energy is available in different parts of the world. 
हाइड्रोकार्बन इज फुल ऑफ लैटिन अमेरिका हाइड्रोकार्बन इज फुल ऑफ कैनेडा विद द शेल गैस रिवोल्यूशन द नेट इंपोर्टर यूएसए इज नाउ बिकमिंग एक्सपोर्टर सो वॉट थ्रू साइंटिफिक इनोवेशन साइंटिफिक मूवमेंट एनर्जी मार्केट ऑफ वर्ल्ड इज चेंजिंग सो द कंज्यूमिंग पैटर्न इज ऑल्सो चेंजिंग विन द रोवर्स कंज्यूमर As you rightly said, India is the number three energy consumer. By next few decades, India will be will be the major energy consumer. But the energy bulk energy consumer can dictate the price, dictate the quality of energy. I am not only uh, claiming India can do that. Some of Asian countries can create a hub, create a club, and we can influence. We can. I don't mean the way we're talking about the influence the market, not in a negative way. No one knows why the energy, the crude oil price was 105 dollar three years back. Why it is 45? Nobody knows. But the cost of production is everybody knows. Per barrel cost of production is below 10 dollar. Some taxes may be there, but why it was 105? Nobody knows. I have met uh, in last uh, two and a half years. I have been the cautioning of uh, Indian energy sector. I have met almost all the world expert uh, in the oil sector. What will the price of oil? And there is fixed answer by everybody. Whether it is Daniel Berrigan or Betty Bro, whether it is uh, you know, Professor Fisher Aki. Nobody can predict oil. Oil is very oily. <laughs> <laughs> so I guess uh, my my mind take is. Some of Asian country can create a sticky situation in this oil market. Um, good evening, sir. My name is Ekansh. Uh, I'm a student at the Harvard Business School. Uh, my question is that uh, what is the government's policy on the uh, uh, nuclear power at the moment? Uh, specifically, if you can talk about, is there any plan of the Modi government to spend uh, to invest in thorium power because India is rich in thorium sands as opposed to uranium, which has to be imported from outside. I don't know the end of it, but I'm sure that is. This is Xin Yu Chen uh, from Engineering School at Harvard. So I have a question associated with the previous discussion about solar power. We know that India has a major commitment in developing renewable power, especially solar. And uh, what do you think would be the challenge of implementing the target? And uh, do you think that the severe air pollution in India is a major threat of uh, developing the solar power? And because uh, because of the uh, severe haze condition, uh, the solar radiation will significantly reduce. Thank you. Before answering your main question, let me clarify: India is not the one of the polluted country of the world. My carbon emission is very low among the world's in India. But uh, let me answer your basic question: uh, What's your strategy on solar? Yes, India is one of the biggest uh, uh, pollution holder of solar energy. We have a comm commitment to produce uh, 100 gigawatt of solar energy by 2022. Two basic challenges we found in solar energy movement. One is uh, the storage capacity. What to do about the solar energy? If we generate solar energy, how to store that? That uh, gray area is there. The whole world is uh, uh, concentrated on that area. And number two, what is the cost of production of solar energy? Uh, I would like to happily share one information recently in India, due to our scale, due to our competitiveness. Now we have come out with the latest speed. We have come out uh, with a price of around five cent uh, per kilowatt in Indian market. And uh, I think you know, last year we have uh, raised over the show solar radiation. Uh, we have not thought about that. Primarily we are now concentrating on generation of the uh, solar energy. At one point of time, that concern can be taken care. Of. We have time for one more question. Well then, um, I will ask it. Um, at the end of your talk, 
you mentioned a commitment to environmental justice. How do you define environmental justice? So, after pandemic, we need in my energy basket, uh, now I am depending around 60% from coal. This is really to me. The kind of uh, economy we have, we have to look into all my strategic pocket also. When I am talking about energy justice, I have a commitment to provide energy to all segments of society. Simultaneously, I can share one information with you. In the next 30 to 40 years, the incremental wealth, incremental growth, 30% will come from India. My strategy is this 30% incremental growth, how do I manage? Should I again depend on coal? Should I again depend on transportation fuel, the crude oil? Or whether I am focusing on renewables? Or whether I should concentrate on gas based energy? I will do my responsibility, I will come here. My price is very committed to COP21 because I need my responsibility, I know my responsibility. I would like to be more responsible. Having my, I want to reduce the coal in my energy mix basket. Not reducing today's uh, uh, number. By taking, taking care through gas and renewable on the incremental requirement. That's my strategy. So I will be more responsible. I will be increase this component. Today I am consuming 6% uh, natural gas in my basket. In my next uh, 10 years, the kind of investment I am doing in gas infrastructure, in pipelines, in terminals, to create a gas market, bring, up, bring out more reforms for oil and gas production, Primarily gas production and giving marketing and price freedom to new gas production. In that way, I want to create a new cleaner energy market in my market. Great answer, and I want to uh, thank all of you for coming and please join me in thanking the minister. Oh, yes, uh, I got the students have a present for you.